What if I told you that the secret to improving your kid's language is being their worst enemy? Sounds crazy, right? But stick around, and I'll show you how playing the villain might just make you the hero of your kid's language learning journey. If you have followed this channel, you know that we love to play while learning. And why is that? Because, you know, playing is all kids care about. As a parent, you might even have felt the pain of trying to make your kid do homework or read a book in a target language. And that's why I think that you could use an alternative path. Today, I'm going to show you a game I whipped up for my daughter, Selena, and I'll walk you through how you can do the same thing for your child. But the best part? You can tweak this game to work with any language, whether it's boosting their native tongue or diving into a secondary one. Are you ready to transform your living room into a language lab? Let's go! Superhero! Language power activate! Yes, but first things first. We gotta find out what lights your kids fire. It's pretty simple, really. Just watch them play and you'll get the picture. Is your kiddo into soccer, dancing, or something else entirely? For us, Selena is all about being a superhero. At this time, she's learning Spanish as her fourth language, but just running around pretending to be a, you know, pint-sized wonder woman isn't gonna do much for language learning. So what can we do? Any ideas? What about a superhero school where we learn to say kaboom in 10 languages? <laughs> Close, but not quite. We decided to go with a superhero accessory shop. Can you tell me what, what is that book? It's where little caped crusaders can buy or sell the tools of their trade. That book is a thing that you write a villain or a hero's name here and it will show you everything what a hero or villains do. This way Selena has to describe gadgets, but that's not all. In addition, there's a villain that also upgrades his gadgets in order to defeat the hero. I have to write hero here. Hero. You write her name. You need to find his or her name first. And you guessed it, that villain is me. The premise for the game is simple. The villain and the hero is trying to outcompete each other by first upgrading weapons in the gadget store. Later, they will chase each other and fight. So the weapon store is where the actual learning takes place, while the chase is pure fun. Not hero or villain, the name, because there are many heroes and villains in this town. In addition, if I took the role as the cashier or salesperson in the store, then Selena as the hero would purchase and vice versa. If I as the villain wanted to purchase, then Selena took the role as the cashier. So my daddy is the enemy because he's always the villain in the game. There you go. That is how I became both Selena's enemy and teacher. Oftentimes, when we find the name for an obscure weapon in English, Selena is curious about its name in other languages as well. The funny thing about playing language games like this is that there will always be a learning experience that you could not have foreseen. That is what makes it so interesting. In a minute, I will give you five steps you can follow to design your very own language learning game for your child. But let's look at another example, just so we have more th reference when we dive into the theory behind all this. Here's another day-to-day -day activity turned into language learning. Now, as a parent, think about this. What's the one thing most kids can't resist sneaking into the kitchen for? That's right, snacks right? So, pray tell, how could we turn this into a language game? Here's what we came up with. We called it Taste Bud Teacher. Let's say your kid is always sneaking into the kitchen for snacks. Why not turn that into a delicious language lesson? Yummy! Are we going to eat our way through the dictionary? Not exactly, Selena but we are going to let our taste buds do some teaching here. Here's the game. 
Grab a few snacks from the kitchen, fruits, crackers, cheese, whatever you have at hand. Blindfold your child and give them a taste of each snack. Their job is to guess what the snack is in the target language. Okay, so here we have the sample testing for today. And Selena is blindfolded. If they get it right, they earn the right to ask for another one. If they get it wrong, you get to describe the snack to them in the target language. And they have to guess again. Come closer. I don't know where you are. Okay, ready? Here. Don't forget to let your child become the snack master <laughs> once in a while. This encourages them to use descriptive language and form more complex sentences when describing the food. It's like the red thing in the cereal. Yeah, and what do we call that? Raspberry? Ah, uh, that's close, but not quite. It's red. It's a little bit like shrunk, like a... I know it's like... It's almost like the raisins. Yeah, exactly. It looks like a raisin. But it's red. I don't know what it's called. Yeah? It's, it ends with berry. I know. <laughs> Okay, I guess the game stops here, because if she cannot guess, she's not allowed to have another snack. Go out. Go G. Go G, baby. Yeah, that's it. Okay, ready for number two? Huh? We have more? Yeah. You said one. Uh, actually, we are cheating, because if she cannot guess it, we're not supposed to give her another one, but okay. Almond! Oh, that's, that's very quick. We are soon ready to dive into the secret steps to making the language learning games. But what do you think makes the Taste Bud Teacher game so great? That I can eat all the chocolate in my house? <laughs> no, that's not even true, Selena. It's really easy to adjust the level of difficulty. Last week, Selena learned the word bread in Spanish. Spanish is a fourth language. But what if she were challenged to learn the word custard apple, for example, which is a Thai fruit? Even if English is your native language, the chance is that you don't know what this is because it's just not very well known outside of Thailand. The point is that the game is versatile and can be used for both foreign and native languages. Now, let's talk about how you can do this. So, you, as a parent, what's your kid's current obsession? Shout it out loud. Great. Now, keep that in mind as we go through the steps and think about how you could turn it into a language game. Pick something that your child loves doing. It could be anything from playing with dolls to building with Lego or a sport. So number two, now you need to think about what language skills you want to focus on. Is it vocabulary, sentence structure, or maybe pronunciation? Number three, you need to come up with basic rules that incorporate the language elements into the activity. Keep it simple. In the superhero shop, it was the fact that both the villain and the hero were trying to outcompete each other by upgrading their gadgets. Number four, and this is where the magic happens. Add an unexpected element that makes the game exciting. In our superhero shop, it was that sometimes Selena had to play the villain. Number five, and final, play the game with your child and see what works. Tweak it. Don't be afraid to change the rules if needed. Oftentimes your kid can actually steer you in a direction that you didn't even think of. And thus you learn something new. Can I make my stuffed animals sing in Spanish? Okay, stop that for now. But that's a great idea, Selena. But let's save it for the end of the video. But you see how easy it is to come up with ideas once you start thinking creatively? If you want to download my notes about the steps you need to take to make a language learning game for your kid, just write, send me the notes in the comments, and I'll happily ship them over to you. 
I added some details there that we did not have time to go through in this video. Remember, the goal isn't to create perfect little linguists overnight. It's about making language learning a natural, fun part of your day. So, whether you're running a superhero shop, tasting mystery snacks, or teaching stuffed animals to sing, keep it light, keep it fun, and watch those language skills soar. And here's a little secret. You're not just teaching your kid a language, you're teaching them how to learn, how to be creative, and how to see learning as an adventure. Now that's a superpower worth having, isn't it? So, what game will you create with your little language learner today? Please put it in the comment section below. But I gotta tell you, now that you've seen how easy it is to create these games, you might be wondering how to take it to the next level. Well, if you enjoyed learning about these language games, you're going to love our video on how to use theater improv games for even more creative learning. And who knows, your child might even start teaching you. Would you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel? Thank you. Then, go be super creative, like the hero you are. And here is the song from earlier. Today, we're diving into three improv games that will revolutionize how your child learns language. Maragat, crepe to do. Pelty, 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 pelty. He says, don't do that. That is not good. No, 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 no.